Hello and welcome to the video series. My name is Chris Collins and I'm going to take you through a whole workflow that you can easily replicate yourself. I've got an average photo here, nothing special, that has a fair amount of contrast. You can see up here in the histogram there's a slight bit of clipping. We're going to edit this in Camera Raw and then open it up in Photoshop. And because we're going to be using both and not relying on Camera Raw by itself, we're going to use Camera Raw in a, in a specific way, namely to prepare the file for Photoshop or pre-digest it, you could think of. Now what this will usually mean for you is that when you're done with it in Camera Raw, it's not going to be looking as nice as you, as you would have hoped. Things are going to look a little bit washed out. And the reason for this is because we want to preserve as much information in the histogram as possible. Now the image as you see it here looks pretty decent. However, if you look up here for instance, right in here, you can see there's a lot of clipping going on where there's no detail. And you can also see the clipping represented here in the histogram. We have a little bit in the darks, but especially the lights, and you can see, uh, for instance, the blue channel has the most clipping right in here. And the problem with Camera Raw is that when the image looks good visually here, most likely there is some sort of clipping. And when you have the image set so that there is no clipping, a lot of times the image here will be washed out, which is actually what we're going to be going for here. So to begin, we're going to go on these tabs and set them all to the, a new default setting, where once we've changed the settings on all these tabs up here, we're going to save it as a new default so that for subsequent images you open up, it'll start off with your new defaults. To begin, let's look down here, where it says Adobe RGB 8-bit. That's the default setting that it ships with, so you want to click on here and set it to 16-bit so that it brings in all the information from the camera. Now the camera probably isn't going to be 16 bits. This Digital Rebel, for instance, brings it in as 12 bits per channel. The newer ones, such as the 40Ds, I think that's where it started with, it'll come in as 14-bit, which is actually four times the information. And of course it's only going to grow from there with time as the technology improves. We're going to leave it to Adobe RGB as the color space, 16 bits per channel, and we're going to leave it at the default size, which is the one with no minuses or plus signs, so that it's just the size that it came out of from the camera. And over here where it says the resolution, we'll leave it at 240. You can change this, you can change it here, or you can change it in Photoshop, and just keep in mind that this doesn't really affect the pixels per se, it's just data for the printer. So this can be changed without altering any of these pixels. So we're just going to leave it at 240. Once you've got this set up, click OK, and from then on, it's going to remember it. And by the way, Adobe RGB is the preferred color space, and most modern cameras today will let you shoot in Adobe RGB. So make sure you're not shooting in sRGB, in other words. Okay, from there, let's have a look at these tabs up here. The presets you can leave alone. The camera calibration. This is to be used if you have an actual camera profile for your lens and camera combination. If you have that info, enter it here. There's sites where you can download this if you don't have it. It's not crucial. It's just to make slight corrections for any uh, color offset that the glass and the and the lens might provide, that sort of thing. So when in doubt, just leave these set to zero. The next one we want to come down here is the lens correction. Let's zoom in to a spot here where there's a highlight. And the chromatic aberration, as you can see here, that little shift, is just to offset any problems with the lens. If you don't have any problems, I'd say leave it to zero. Only, only enter any values here if you notice chromatic aberration taking place. These next two tabs, split toning and grayscale, you can leave alone. 
These next three tabs are the crucial ones, though, that we're going to be playing with here. We'll cover this Detail tab in this segment, and in the next segment, we're going to cover the Tone Curve and everything under this Basic tab here. So, let's go to the Detail tab, and for this to mean anything, you do want to be zoomed in at least at 100%. Right now, we're at 400%. Uh, there's only a couple things to to know about here. The first is the sharpening. And as you can see, the default setting is 25. Let, let me move it up to 100 so you can see what's going on here. And you can see this is actually destructive. What we want to do is turn it to zero. You can see the image looks a little blurrier this way. And that's actually what we're going for. Later on, when we're in Photoshop, eventually we will sharpen it but after having done things like noise reduction. Right now I don't want to take any of these artifacts into Photoshop because it's very difficult to remove them and it's easy to sharpen. My guess is these default settings are, are set uh, to 25 and 25 down for the color noise reduction because a lot of people don't even plan on opening the image up in Photoshop. They just want to process it in Camera Raw and then be done with it. Next, let's have a look at the noise reduction. We're in color set to 25 here. Things look okay as they are at a noise reduction setting of 25. Let's turn it up all the way to 100. And see how it drains the color out where you don't really see much of the subtleties here? Let's turn it to zero now. And you can see there's quite a bit of color in here. All in here warm and cool colors, the uh, sky reflection in the eye. If we set it to 25, you can see it's considerably, uh, you've lost a lot of color already. Now I will say that the color noise reduction here in Camera Raw actually works better than in Photoshop. And you can see there is a little bit of color noise here and you can see it mostly in the shadows. If you're at a high ISO setting, you're going to have a lot more color noise. Color noise is a, is a splotchiness of color that's just inherent in the way that the sensors on these digital cameras work. You could think of luminance noise as the graininess that used to be associated with film, but we're not going to touch that at all. You can, you can look in a, in a shadow area of your image and you can see there's some color noise in the shadow. We're going for default settings here, so, so you can see even it set to 1, it starts to eliminate a lot of the color noise. You turn it up much past 10 and it really starts sucking the life out of your image. So for a default setting, I'm going to put this just at 1. Just that little bit it could use without any noticeable destruction. So there you have it. On the Detail tab, we're going to leave the Sharpening set to 0, the Noise Reduction set to 1, and down here on where it says Adobe RGB, we're going to make sure it's 16-bit Adobe RGB. And we'll continue with the other tabs in the next segment.